my name is Carolyn Service with O2BStampin.com and I'm coming to you today to show you a technique that is spreading like wildfire on the internet. It is uh, pronounced, some people pronounce it bouquet and some people pronounce it boca, but whichever way you like to pronounce it, it's a fun technique to do and it makes a gorgeous background. So I'm going to show you how to make this cute little card today. So let's get started. First, we are going to make a template using three circle punches. Now, if you have uh, the circle framelits, you can use those as well. But on my particular uh, template, I used the one and three eighths inch circle, the one inch circle, and the three quarter inch circle. And I made the template looks like this. You can see I've used it already. <laughs> um, and then we're going to have a piece of shimmery white cardstock. You probably can't see the shimmer on it, but it's a little bit of a heavier textured paper. And there are several ways to do this technique, but this is the one that I particularly liked the best. With my um, card, I'm going to use three colors. I'm going to use Hello Honey, I'm going to use Cucumber Crush, and I'm going to use Tempting Turquoise. Now because I'm using three different colors, I want to cover this uh, shimmery white paper with each color, about one third of the paper with each color. So I'm going to start out with one of our sponges that's been cut into a smaller portion, which I find easier to use and more economical. And I'm going to start with the Hello Honey. I'm just going to ink up my sponge. And then I'm just going to randomly, um, starting in a circular motion, I'm just going to randomly start sponging on my paper. Now you want the background of this to be quite vivid and bright. So you can put quite a bit of ink on it. Put some up here in the corner. And then I am going to switch colors. I'm going to go with the Cucumber Crush. And again, I'm going to just ink up my sponge and come in at the edge here and just go in a circular motion. Now it doesn't matter if you overlap the colors, that's perfectly okay. You just want to make sure they're nice and bright. That's what the goal is that you're working for, is to make sure that it's nice and vivid. You can also use sponge daubers to do this process if they're easier for you to use or if you don't have the sponges, you could also use the daubers. And then the last color that I'm going to use is the Tempting Turquoise. I love this color especially because it is so bright and vivid. And I'm just going to fill in all this white space. Oops. Not a pretty color. I really like this color. I think it just makes this whole project really pop. Okay, I think I like the way that looks. One little more spot here of white. And you can always go back and add a little more color if you think, you know, it's not dark enough there where that... Actually, I'm just going to put a little more color there. Okay, I think I like how that looks. Now, each time you do this technique, you're going to find, even if you use the same colors and you think that you're using the same pattern, you're going to find it comes out just a little bit different every time. It's kind of a fun side effect of this technique. Now one thing that you need um, to do is to make sure that this is good and dry. So I've actually gone ahead and made this up a few hours ago and I'm going to bring in that piece that I know that it's good and dry. Okay, similar. 
not exactly the same. Maybe this one has a little bit more blue, um, but you get the idea. So we're going to use this one. Okay, and then we're going to bring in our template. Make sure I'm using the same side. Okay. And you're going to need some white craft ink, white craft ink pad, I should say, and a sponge dauber. Um, now, a little tip here is that you want your sponge dauber, you want to just kind of use uh, a corner of your white ink pad because sometimes the color here, especially if it's not really dry, um, will transfer to the white and then if you know you can contaminate your white ink pad. Um, if you don't want to wait a couple hours that I waited while I was doing other things to make sure that your colors are dry, you can always use a heat tool to speed things up. Now I prefer to daub mine. I have seen uh, some techniques where they actually um, rub it in a circle, but I prefer to daub it. And I also don't go back to my ink every single time because I kind of want some of these circles to be a little lighter in color than the others. So just make sure that you're using all of the ink that's on your dauber before you re-ink it. And another thing that I've noticed is um, if you tend to go in a circle like this, sometimes you'll have a rim of white that cakes up sort of around the edge of your circle. If that happens to you, just take your finger and kind of erase it. Now what you're going to do is overlap um, some of your circles and one of the things that I found is if you put your finger down on the stencil here where there's already ink on your paper it will get on the back of your template and then when you move it around it'll smudge it so just try to keep your fingers off of the areas that are already stamped already inked I should say Okay, I think I like that. Now, one of the things that you can do that will, oh, actually, let's dry this a little bit. I'm gonna take my um, heat tool. Actually, let me put this on. Uh, might speed things up a little bit, plus it will help me to not burn my fingers. Okay. All right, then the last thing that you want to do is you want to pick out a couple of the circles that sort of be like your focal point. And because we are going to put an element on this card, I'm just going to kind of actually just going to kind of get the warping out of it that the heat tool caused. We're going to put this, say, somewhere in here. So I think I'm going to have this, and maybe this one up here, be my focal points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink over them again, and that will make them appear to be whiter and closer than the rest of the circles. This is kind of a little magic. <laughs> it appears to be magic anyway, the way this works. So, see how that looks closer all of a sudden? And I'm going to do that same thing with this one. So 
So now it's sort of like a three-dimensional effect where those two look a little bit closer. Actually, I think I might even do this one down here. Okay, I like that. So you can kind of see how the, the ones that we re-inked are a little whiter and make them look a little closer. Okay, we're going to put our white craft ink aside and then we're going to actually let this dry a little bit where I've just added those and we're going to make the rest of the card. So we're going to have the Cucumber Crush as our background. Use our bone folder to make a nice crease. This is a piece of Whisper White and it, uh, see, it measures five by three and three quarter. I'm just going to go ahead and add that. Using a little bit larger of a border on the front of this card than I normally would because I want the green for the frog to pop. Okay, and then this is still a little bit wet. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I made one of these earlier. I'm just going to bring it in to sort of show you how to finish off the card. So we're going to put some adhesive on the back of that. Then we're going to bring in our Your Sublime stamp set, one of my very favorites in the new catalog this year. I can't wait to play with all of them, but the one that I chose for today's project um, is this little silly frog, which I love. And we're going to get him out, some Memento black ink, and a piece of cardstock that measures two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Ink this up. Awesome. Totally awesome. Wipe that off real quick with my stamp and scrub. And then we're going to take our Cucumber Crush ink. Pad. We've got a little ink in the lid there. And we're going to take a blender pen and we're just going to color him in. Now, I also like to highlight the writing on this particular stamp. So I'm actually just going to go, more ink here. So I'm just going to go over that so that that stands out like so. Now if you've never used a blender pen, there's only a few rules to remember. Actually, let me put some more ink in here so I can show this. You're going to take your palms of your hand, just squeeze them together. It's going to give you a palette of ink inside your lid. If you want your frog to be really dark green, you're going to go right into the darkest green there and you're going to color. It's just like having a marker, but you can make it any color that you want. Okay, and I think I want his smile to be nice and dark. And then as you color, the ink on here is going to get lighter. So then wherever you want your lighter colors to be, you're just going to color. I'm going to kind of show you here. Okay, so see how light, let me zoom in a little bit for you. See how light this is compared to this? So the more you color, the lighter your ink is going to be in your blender pen. So I always go for my darkest ones first, and then wherever I want to color my lightest colors, then I go there next. And if you are, oh, I've 
<laughs> zoomed way on in. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Okay, and the other thing is, um, so if you don't want it to be this dark, then you can take the color and just bring it out here to the edge and make it lighter, okay? All right, so let me zoom this back. Okay, so we're going to color this little guy in. Go all around. You want to miss coloring in the spots. You just kind of want to go around the spots. Leave them white. And the blender pens come three to a package. I'm going by memory, but I think they're $9.95. I can always put that information on the screen for you. Okay, I think I like how that looks. I'll leave a little bit of a white space here, just sort of give him, nah, I'm not either, I'm just going to color it in. <laughs> Change my mind. Okay, I like the way that looks. Yes. All right, color. and to clean your blender pen, all that you do is you simply just color it like this on your uh, scrap paper until it runs clear, and then you can use it in any other color um, ink pad. Okay. Um, so one of the other things that I want to do is to take my cucumber crush again and my green sponge. And I just I'm sure I put the right one here. Yeah. And I just want to sponge around the edge to sort of make this stand out. I love sponging. I just think it adds a lot more dimension. Such a simple technique, but yet adds a lot to it. Okay, so now I'm going to take... It was funny when I was listening to one of my videos the other day, I noticed that I kept saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna do that in this video, but I think I am anyway. <laughs> So I've got four dimensionals on the back. I'll peel those off. Bring my card back in. Put this little guy. I think I'm gonna put him on this side. So I, I really like that blue. I don't want to cover it up. Okay, now last but not least, I'm gonna show you another little trick. So this is a perfect little card to make googly eyes with. But if you don't have googly eyes, I have just the answer. So we have a new product. It's called White Perfect Accents. And you can color these using um, Sharpie markers uh, or any permanent marker. And if you wanted like a specific um, stamping up color, then you can color it with our markers, but then you have to put just a a thin layer of crystal effects over it because our markers are not uh, permanent markers. But watch this little trick. So I'm taking a black Sharpie marker. Let's see, I'm going to turn it over here so you can see it better. And I'm just going to make a dot and another dot. Are you getting the idea so quickly? And I'm just, then I will take, <laughs> try not to say that I'm gonna, these up with my snips or you can use your paper piercer. This adds your dimension to your eyes as though you were adding googly eyes. There we go. But you're not. And how's that? Cute. Isn't it cute? Love it. So um, you could also add some other things. You could put ribbon across here or another like piece of cucumber crush green strip of paper across there, you know, whatever. But I just like the simplicity of this. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Again, it's called the, I pronounce it Boca technique, but I've heard many of it pronounced bouquet. It's B-O-K-E-H. So I'm not sure absolutely which one's correct, but hope you enjoyed it anyway. 
And again, my name is Carolyn Service with O2Bstamping.com. I would love to have you come to my blog, check it out, and follow me if you'd like. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook is at your service. So I hope you have a great day. Thank you for visiting. Bye-bye.